Here's what you need to know about Hurricane Florence. It is shaping up to deliver disaster for days to the Carolina coast. And its latest projected path is now forcing a fourth state to declare a state of emergency. Georgia now joining North and South Carolina and Virginia. Uh, Florence is now expected to pause right at North Carolina's coast, shift south, and pose even greater danger. So Florence could now batter coastal areas within uh, 24 hours of hurricane force winds, bring catastrophic flooding with more than three feet of rain, and churn up life-threatening storm surges of up to 13 feet. We have a full team of reporters all along the southeast coast covering Hurricane Florence, but I want to start with Jennifer Gray, our meteorologist, for just the most up-to-date information on where Florence is going to go. And you were talking before about how Florence is almost like inhaling and exhaling, and it may be downgraded for now to a Category 3, but it could strengthen as it heads close to the coast. You're exactly right. And when you focus on the one, two, three, four, five, what category it is, it was a category four at 130 mile per hour winds. Now it's 125 mile per hour winds. So when you get to that level, it really doesn't matter. This is a major storm, category three. This is a big storm. It's not only powerful, it's big in size. 125 miles per hour could strengthen a little bit more before making landfall. It's going to fluctuate in intensity. That's very normal. It has gusts of 160 miles per hour is still expected to make landfall on Friday as a category three right here around Wilmington somewhere inside this cone could be extreme uh, northeast sections of of South Carolina even some of the models are hinting that this could go onshore a little bit and meander to the south other models are showing it may hang off offshore and meander to the south regardless that this change in track and the extended period with showing this little um, shift to the south is going to shred the coastline. It's going to mean that more of the coastline is going to be impacted and it's going to be more people are going to be in this flooding area. So if you're evacuating the coast and going inland, you need to be very careful about the place you choose to sit this storm out because a lot of places well inland will get possibly 10, 20 inches of rain. And we are now, like you said, a concern for Georgia. Now inside the cone uh, could be in this for uh, some flooding as well. So look at this. This area has widened. This 20 to 30 uh, inch of rain totals. You can see stretching now down to include Myrtle Beach, portions of South Carolina. This area was a little bit smaller last time I talked to you. That's widened. And we've also seen uh, well inland. Columbia could get 10 to 20 inches of rain. Not to mention that the storm surge is going to be incredibly high. 9 to 13 feet of storm surge pushing inland. That's pushing on land, pushing up in the rivers, overflowing the banks. And with this storm sitting either just offshore or just onshore for more than 24 hours in the same spot practically, you can walk faster than the storm is going to be moving. That means that we'll see this storm surge last for several high tide cycles. And so this is going to be something that this coast of North Carolina and South Carolina has never seen before. That's why it's incredibly important to get away from this storm, get well inland. The flooding is going to be catastrophic potentially for a lot of areas and that coastline could definitely be shredded brook all up and down. It's going to be uh, devastation possibly for miles. Let me say that again. You can walk faster then the storm will be moving, right? So that yeah. is key and what we do, what you just said, therefore that will lead to all of the, the flooding issues the for, flooding. for the coastal Carolina issues. Jennifer, thank you so much. And even uh, farther inland, you know, more than a million people have been on the move, emptying out of Carolina beaches. We've got pictures of gas station pumps all wrapped up, uh, but some people are choosing to stay, uh, increasing the urgency from local and state and federal officials. Uh, they say the window to get out of town is shrinking fast. Uh, moments ago in South Carolina, Carolina, the governor said this is said, said this to those who are not under mandatory evacuation. And if you are not in an evacuation zone or you are in one of those counties in an evacuation zone where the order has not been given to evacuate, leave. Go ahead and leave and go to find high ground because you may be in danger. This is a big, big storm. Drew Griffin is live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And Drew, the Governor McMaster said that 300,000 people have evacuated there from South Carolina. Uh, is it pretty quiet where you are? 
It's, it's very quiet. Quite frankly, Brooke, that new forecast turned south this morning was a game changer for a lot of the holdouts. Yeah. And we can show you that the evacuation route highways from here in Myrtle Beach all the way down to Charleston are now all heading one way, and that is away from Florence. It's not just a southward hit that could take place. It's also the duration of this storm that you were talking about with Jennifer Gray. You know, it's it's easy to ride out. It's not easy, but it's easier to ride out a storm that comes and goes. Even Hugo, 29 years ago, it went through in a snap. When you have a storm just hanging around and battering the coast, that's just days and days of misery. And I think a lot of the people just decided, you know what, it is just not worth it. You can see the beach behind me is empty. The businesses here in Myrtle Beach forced closure at 5 o'clock tonight. And after that, the, uh, the mandatory evacuation is underway, by which, you know, you just do not have the promise of emergency or police help if the storm gets bad enough. So I think many people have heeded the warnings. The people who are leaving certainly had time to leave. It wasn't that crowded actually leaving. So you could get... We lost um, Drew Griffin in Myrtle Beach. Thank you, Drew. Uh, to North Carolina, where we know of at least one shelter that is at full capacity. Remember, North Carolina could get up to 40 inches of rain from Florence. So let's go to Kaylee Hartung. She's in Carolina Beach, North Carolina. And Kaylee, you know, Drew was just making the point because of the, the path change with Florence, that was sort of a game changer for a lot of people in South Carolina saying, all right, we really do need to leave. I'm wondering if people in North Carolina feel less so now. Well, Brooke, by the looks of the scene on the beach right now, that should be a concern. I think it is for a lot of officials, just as Jennifer Gray said, you can walk faster than this storm will move. Local officials right now hoping people start walking a little bit faster towards the exit route from Carolina Beach, a barrier island in North Carolina where there is a mandatory evacuation order, a deadline of 8 p.m. tonight, where the one bridge off this island will be closed. And yet I see about a dozen people to my left, about a dozen people behind me on this beach and even some folks in the water despite the strong rip currents that are an incredible threat right now before this storm even arises. But tourists were gone from here long ago. The mayor here says he believes 50% of this small island's population left yesterday. Many of the people I've spoken to who have come out to the beach here today are locals. They don't live on this island. They really just came to enjoy the last bit of good weather they have and expressed a sentiment similar to this one. We're not crazy enough to stay on the island by any chance. I really think everybody should probably evacuate um, off the island. Um, I mean, it's just, I mean, we get lunar tide floods here all the time. So with a nine to 13 foot storm surge, I mean, this whole island's gonna be inundated with water. Um, so we're not that crazy, but you know, we're in the city limits in Wilmington and you know, in a brick home. So boarded up, ready to go with the generator. Yeah, so much of the sentiment here, Brooke, if you're not under mandatory evacuation orders, folks aren't leaving their home. It's fine. It's hard to find anyone who's leaving the city of Wilmington. But here on Carolina Beach, despite that turn in the storm you mentioned, you're still looking at life threatening storm surge. Uh, the, the sand dunes over here to my right, these are 12 feet tall. Those are expected to be toppled. That hasn't happened since Hurricane Fran in 1996. This area, you know, Brooke, you're familiar with it. It's grown so much in the last 20 plus years since the last time people saw a storm uh, coming anywhere close to this magnitude. You want people here to heed those warnings and, and that clock continues to tick towards the 8 p.m. deadline to get off this island because if you stay, you are doing so at your own risk. Emergency responders will not be there to help you if you need it. Went to school in Chapel Hill. Everyone would head east to go surf out where you are and I'm just hoping that people choose not to do that and go the other direction. Kaylee Hartung, thank you so much. In Carolina Beach, North Carolina. I want to go a bit inland now, go to Wilmington, North Carolina. That is where uh, journalist Tim Bucklin is standing by for me. He's a senior political reporter for the Wilmington Star News, but he's been in you know storm coverage mode for the last week. So politics aside there, Tim, you know, you you tell me, you know, we've got all these pictures of people boarding up, you know, all these storefronts uh, all along the main drag there in Wilmington. You tell me, are, are, are people heeding the warnings to get out of town? What's the story? Well, as of today, officials with New Hanover County government have told us that it seems as though most people are heeding these warnings, whether they be mandatory or voluntary. We've had a shelter here in Wilmington already fill up, and uh, the county has opened three more here in Wilmington, along with a couple more uh, in and around the Raleigh area. 
So people seem to be taking this one seriously. Like your previous um, guests have said, there's, this kind of storm hasn't happened in decades and decades, perhaps even since the 50s. But since then, we have grown by leaps and bounds. We have roughly five times as many people living here as did during Hurricane Hazel in 1954. And meteorologists have told me this is going to be a once in a lifetime uh, game changing event. So tell me about your newsroom, you know, how you're covering it, where you're all hunkering down. Well, we have some reporters uh, stationed at emergency operations centers in Pender, New Hanover and Brunswick counties. And then we have several reporters who are going to hunker down in our building uh, at the Star News, which is a brick fortress uh, that has no windows. So we're oh, going to wow. ride it out through the storm and then make sure we are constantly providing updates at starnewsonline.com. We know that we are the source of information for people, not only mm -hmm. here, but for people who have left and are looking for news for how their home is affected. Including your own family who you sent out of town. Is that right, Tim? That's right. Uh, my wife, Kate, and my kids, Zoe and Max, went to Charlotte about uh, two days ago. Uh, but I'm staying here. And, and you wrote out Hurricane Matthew, right? Correct. But Hurricane Matthew, if people are assuming that Hurricane Florence is going to be anything like Hurricane Matthew was, they're, they're mistaken. Uh, there's a reason emergency management officials have told me that if people choose to ignore these orders, they've got body bags ready to go. This is going to be a completely different storm. I've never been through anything like this. Most people who have lived here have never been through anything like this. We should take it seriously. Body bags, my goodness. Um, uh, here's my last question for you. We know that Florence has shifted direction and Wilmington is, is less of a bullseye than first projected. You know, do, do, do people where you are feel that Wilmington should be under a mandatory evacuation? Uh, it's a question that's being asked, but um, Wilmington is a little bit higher. And basically what they've said is if, if you can get out, just get out. The advice is to just go. You can come back and fix your house. You can't come back and fix you if you die. Um, so I think most people are taking this one pretty seriously. Tim Buckland with the Wilmington, Wilmington Star News. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate you Thank and you your newsroom and all the coverage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still ahead here, President Trump lagging 20 points behind Robert Mueller in this new poll about how they're handling the Russia investigation. Uh, this is the president signs a new bill to punish uh, those involved in election interference. Uh, but coming up next, we'll, we'll talk to a storm chaser live who will be riding out Hurricane Florence as the clock ticks for most people on the coast to evacuate while they can. We originally were going to stay, but um, once the track changed uh, overnight or early this morning, then we, we really did not feel safe in our house. So. For that reason, we're leaving. We, we hate to leave, but we need to be safe. It's unpredictable, really, so we need to, we need to get out of here to be safe. So we've got my daughter and my animals, and we're packed up for a week or two if we can't, can't get back in.